How's it going? Let's talk about Dayton freshman guard Mike Sharovjomps, better known as Mongolian Mike, the first Mongolian Division I athlete, uh, or Division I basketball player at least, ever. Um, and he is a legitimate draft prospect, someone to be taken very seriously um, as a legitimate 6'9 guard, measured 6'9, I believe, at Hoop Summit. Um, and it's not just like a 6'9 dude who likes to dribble. He's a guard. Like, he is a point guard. And I think that was really well exemplified by this game. His first start against Western Michigan, where he had eight assists and was just in total command. So we're going to break down his game a little bit today. His dad was a Harlem Globetrotter, and you wouldn't be so surprised watching his game. Um, that pops pretty quick um, in some of the plays he makes. Um, and while I, I've talked about I've talked about this, you know, plenty in the past, that flash is only good if it helps you create better shots. Doesn't matter if it's just for flash. Um, and Mike is able to use his flash to get good shots. Um, this is a crazy a crazy passing window, like. When he releases this pass, like this, this Deron Holmes is not even kind of open, um, but he trusts his guy to go make a tough catch. He puts the ball only where he can get it. The accuracy is perfect. Um, he uses the the overhead to kind of get over the arms of an outstretched defender, and you can see that again, really well in this alternate angle, um, where that's kind of like the only. Like, look how close that was. And it would have been difficult to get that pass over any other way. Um, and he trusts his big man to be in there and to be physical and to get the ball. Um, and he's just so, so prone to these um, flashy passes, which is cool. Um, it is always fun to watch. Um, just cute little no look on the break. Again, you see him freeze this back defender. Um, which is a really important kind of play in transition um, where this defender has to make a choice and Mike is going to make that choice as difficult as possible for that defender. Um, he ends up making a good play, but still, uh, the pass was fun. But Mongolian Mike's passing is far more than just flashy you know, I had another angle, but it's not really important, than just flashy nonsense. He is a really impressive pick-and-roll passer. Um, his best passes are these interior passes where he's passing into space, as many of the great passers do, as we've talked about before on this channel. Um, rather than just passing to a player, he's passing to where a player will be. As Mongolian Mike reads the floor so fast, his processing speed is very, very quick for a freshman um, he's able to see that there's nobody in the paint, even at, you know, when you freeze this at the pass point, it looks like there's someone in the paint here, maybe a help coming, but he's reading everyone's momentum coming up, and he's able to slip that pass in for Deron Holmes for a wide open dunk. Again, we see him pass um, into the open space again to this cutter. Um, he's not passing the ball right here. If he passed it right here, the ball will be past him but he leads his cutter right into this space where he's gonna catch the ball and have an easy dunk in stride, um, which is a small thing that all of the great passers do. This one made me like jump out of my seat, genuinely. Um, what a wonderful read from Mike here. Um, as we see a theme here, at like the decision point, none of these look open. Um, this would have been a really good one to do like a can you read the game like Mike Sharp Jom's video, um, which, maybe, which maybe one day I'll do uh, if you, when if he gets to the leak. Um, again, Deron Holmes, his target does not look open here, but Mike knows that this tagger is clearing out the other way um, and that a little flip over the top, again, his height is such an advantage, being able to see over the defense and get the ball over the defense. And Deron Holmes gets a wide open dunk courtesy of that beautiful, beautiful read. He is, even like on his turnovers, um, you see this willingness and you know hunting of space. Uh, where again, Deron, not Deron, uh, whatever big man this is, is rolling into space. Um, Mike sees the open paint 
and is anticipating his man to slip into this space. And obviously he doesn't, and he looks frustrated like he messed up the play. Um, and not all turnovers are bad turnovers. Um, for young playmakers, turnovers can be good even, um, especially when they show some kind of anticipation and vision, um, as this one do, as this one did. Um, young playmakers will throw a lot of interceptions. That's just what happens, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I think having Deron Holmes is going to be so huge for for Mike's development. Just being a Dayton in general is so great for him as well. Um, with the structure that they have is kind of what he needs to, to clean up his technical issues, especially on defense, but that's a topic for another day. Um, where it's so good for a young playmaker who is so confident in his ability to find these gaps in the defense and to exploit his vision and awareness of what's happening on the court, to have a, like a big guy who he can just throw the ball to and have full trust in that he's going to catch the ball and be able to finish and draw a foul. Again, they pressure him pretty high here. This big man's a little late tracking back, so Mike can throw a quick pass over the top to Duran and trust that he's going to be able to make a play with it. Uh, which is really, really good um, to have. And like a lot of higher profile um, like college guards playing at Power 5 schools don't have that. Um, so it's, it's a luxury that I'm very glad that Mike has and I think is going to be really important for his development. Um, the windows he throws the ball into are just really, really impressive. Like They are NBA-level windows um, on a lot of these passes, which is something to look for for sure when you're scouting you know, passing prospects. Um, as again, he notices that, like, you know, this guy looks like he's guarded, um, but this defender is turned towards, you know, the half court line. He's facing the wrong way. He knows that momentum is carrying his role man towards the rim and that he can throw a lob, you know, pretty easily without contest there. Um, it seems simple, but it's just a really impressive understanding and awareness of space and of passing momentum. And, um, Mike is doing all of this in you know a split second um, on the court. He's not thinking about this. He's processing this immediately and making these plays. Um, and it leads to some very, very pretty offense. Um, and it's not just in the half court. In transition, he's obviously awesome as we got to. He's really, really good at knowing when to pick his advantages and push them and slow things down. Um, there aren't technically numbers here. It's a four on three. But... Mike sees that all of the back defenders are flowing towards this side of the court while he has a streaking defender on the other side, or streaking teammate on the other side of the court, um, and he fires that pass ahead and ends up giving his, you know, his guy a shot to score, um, even if it doesn't end up working out. And this one, I wish we had a different angle because, man, that outlet pass is sick. Um, somehow... Um, like after like the made basket outlet passes are just like a feature of these awesome passers um, and you know we see the camera go on the guy who scored and then we see the ball go in the hoop um, the vision to try this and you know the audacity that that Mike has is really impressive there are, there are holes in his vision for sure um, the main thing is the like out the inside out passes will need to develop as these kind of skip passes when defenders tag hard aren't really in his wheelhouse yet, um, ends up falling over here. But the pace here is great to create advantages, which we'll get into in a sec. His pacing is great for a big guard. Um, but these skip passes are something that will, pro that will need to progress um, because defenses you know, eventually can you know, tag really hard and take away passes to the roll man or cutters or interior players if that's the only pass a player is able to make. Um, but there's a long way from saying that. Um, Mike's passing is obviously phenomenal. Um, his scoring is going to be a necessary counter because um, obviously defenses can just play the pass. Um, and it's going to be a big question. That's going to be like probably the big scouting question for, for Mike. Um, is, you know, situations like this where he's not really even looking to score and defenses can just go way under and there's no advantage really created or pressure put on the defense um, are, are fairly common at this rate. So what is going to be the way, what is going to be the way that, that you know, Mike pressures the defense and is able to score? And as I mentioned, his pacing is really, really impressive. Um, as he knows that he is a threat as a passer, and that if he takes these little pauses and beats in his dribble, that defenses are going to fear 
these passes. Like, again, how hard he tags, how hard this drop big drops, um, which allows Mike, who isn't you know the quickest guy in the world, a runway to get to the rim. And he had, the, the, the finishing is certainly going to be an issue, um, but it allows him a runway to the rim where he can, where he can create a shot as well. Um, his size and like fluidity are really ridiculous. Um, there just aren't a lot of six nine guys who move like this. Um, look how low he gets to the ground. That is very impressive flexibility. It's not perfect, but it is you know almost parallel at that point. That is really impressive. Um, he was able to stay low and then use his off shoulder to bump this defender, create separation for this little floater that. Again, I think a lot of these easy misses and, you know, this probably should have been like a more aggressive attempt at a layup are just things that get cleaned up as you age and experience and play more basketball. Um, but the movement skill like pace creators are something that I've been known to love on this channel. Um, and Mike is no different with his ability to use stride length. Like he's so good at using these long, like long strides at the end of his drives to create um, he's thoughtful about doing that very regularly, which is not something you see from like young big guards all the time. Um, and I'm excited to see him hopefully get more opportunities to create with his size as well. Um, this was the first game where he really got extensive like on ball reps um, as like the point guard. Um, and when you put littler guards on him, hopefully he's just going to be like, "You're too small," and and go around and and get a shot. And the other thing with Mike that we haven't talked about is he is a great shooter, or at least he has shown to be to start this season. Um, and that shooting is something that could be another counter. Again, taking a small guard in the post and shooting right over him. That jumper is beautiful. Um, his high, quick release allows him to shoot over contests pretty seamlessly. This is a pretty good closeout on contest. Um, but because of that 6'9 height, because of his high release point, um, because of how fluid the jumper is, it isn't really a bother uh, to Mike at all. And just just like to point out how crazy this, the shot making has been uh, to start this season, like 6'8", 6'9", shooting almost 11 threes per 100, you know, the free throw volume super low, but I've talked about how important volume is in the past, and Mike is passing with flying colors. There really aren't guys who share his combination of three-point volume and assist rate. Um, if we look at, we have to like lower the thresholds quite a bit to eight threes per 100 and what do they do, like 18 assist rate and lower the height a couple inches. And this is like, these are the guys who have done it um, across a whole season. And obviously there are some very impressive names on this list. Of course, not saying that Mike is going to be as good as any of these guys or, you know, or is, you know, is, is going to be a high, you know, a high touted prospect like that. But the start to his career has been very impressive. And if he can keep up this kind of you know, three point efficiency um, and passing chops, as the problem with a lot of these like big guards, even like the really high caliber prospects like, like Giddy and like Anthony Black this year is that they have real shooting problems. Uh, whereas Mike seems to not have this issue at all. Um, just, he seems to be a guy who is going to have, the defense is going to have to worry about him as a shooter, which just opens up so much for him as a passer, even if the finishing and the slashing isn't as impactful. But above all, for me, uh, Mike Sharp Jumps, Mongolian Mike, is just like such a joyous basketball player. Um, and is one of the player, like the kinds of players that makes me love basketball and makes me want to watch basketball and makes me want to watch him play and, and uh, like try shit like this when I go play pickup. Um, and that's what this is really all about, isn't it? Um, so Mike Sharov jumps, very excited to track him throughout this season um, as he improves and as the season continues. Um, and I'm certainly rooting for him.